A clear relationship between sugar and cancer leads scientists to two conclusions. Sugar use contributes to cancer, and going without it can slow growth of the disease. A hundred years ago, most folks consumed only four pounds of sugar a year. That's this much. Now, however, the average person takes in 40 times this amount, 160 pounds of sugar a year. That's this much. Food manufacturers add enormous amounts of sugar, usually in the form of high fructose corn syrup, to products we consume all day, every day. Coffee drinks and cereal, soda and snacks, even foods you wouldn't expect like spaghetti sauce and peanut butter. This tiny container of yogurt contains more sugar than a candy bar. Now, scientists tell us sugar directly influences cancer cells. The amount we consume can either feed those cells or starve them. In a landmark study, researchers at UTMD Anderson Cancer Center fed mice high fructose corn syrup in percentages equal to what many humans consume. Those mice developed higher rates of lung and breast cancer compared to mice fed less sugar. The study also tells us something about people who already have cancer. One researcher said a lot of patients are told it doesn't matter what you eat after you are diagnosed with cancer. This preliminary animal research suggests that it does matter. And it just absolutely amazes me that medical science is just now finding this out. Fred Hatfield knows firsthand sugar intake matters after a cancer diagnosis. Back in 2012, his diagnosis was basically a death sentence. The doctors gave me three months to live because of widespread metastatic cancer in my skeletal structure. Three months. Three different doctors told me that same thing. It's a horrible, horrible feeling to have someone tell you that the person that you love only has three months to live and you're not going to be with him anymore. Then Fred heard about a low sugar diet called the ketogenic diet, believed to slow cancer in some people. With nothing to lose, he gave it a try, and to his astonishment, it worked. And the cancer was gone, completely. Fred's recovery didn't surprise Dr. Dominic D'Agostino. His team at the University of South Florida discovered mice with highly aggressive metastatic cancer continued living when fed a ketogenic diet. We have uh, dramatically increased survival uh, with metabolic therapy. So we think it's important to get this information out. And it's not just lab animals. Dr. D'Agostino has seen similar results in humans. I've been in uh, correspondence with a number of people, probably at least a dozen people. And uh, over the last year and a half to two years, and uh, all of them are still alive, <laughs> so despite the odds. And uh, so this is very encouraging. The ketogenic diet means no sugar and no starchy carbohydrates like bread and pasta that convert to sugar. D'Agostino says cancer cells love sugar and starch because cancer thrives on the glucose from those foods. Remove the glucose and starve the cancer cells. Glucose also fuels our healthy cells, but if it's not there, those cells can switch to an alternate fuel source called ketone bodies. Cancer cells only run on glucose. Your normal cells have the metabolic flexibility to adapt from using glucose to using ketone bodies, but cancer cells lack this metabolic flexibility, so we can exploit that. Since processed food contains so much sugar and starch, People following the ketogenic diet tend to cook whole foods from scratch. You can go online and there's just cookbooks and, you know, it's not, it's, it's clean eating, just very clean eating. None of the sugars, the salts, the, you know, the, um, the trash food. So when it comes to cancer, sugar is considered public enemy number one. Avoiding it could lead to prevention or slow it down in people fighting the disease. Lori Johnson, CBN News.